basically, the problem that we as the internet service providers industry, that is the people who provide you access and hosting and also third party services, felt about the SI was that it increased rather than decreased the uncertainty for business investment in innovative online digital services in this country. And that's because rather than clarifying the law, it has further clouded the fundamental principles around the liability for third party content. So the principles that we have really, I feel, will carry forward into the debate which is happening on the consultation. And certainly we are, as an industry, putting in our views to that consultation. I feel what has exacerbated the fact is that we have a very wealthy and established reproduction businesses sitting in the kind of the sidelines as well. And that's the music recording, printed books, newspapers, films, and many other kind of rights-based uh, holders, businesses as well, that many of which are seeing their businesses currently in decline. But this is a natural turnover that you get in businesses. And it's been probably assisted to some degree uh, by the fact of te technological evolution as well. And unfortunately, these companies perceive digital business models rather as a threat, uh, rather than an opportunity, which we believe they should do, and quite often blame the internet service providers and the internet for the decline in their revenues over the last numbers of years. Let me emphasize from the outset that ISPAI, sorry, I'll say that again, ISPAI, my organization I represent, firmly supports the rights of artists to earn a living from their creative works. And I think this is very fundamental. We also therefore believe that if people are pirating those copyrighted works, be it by traditional means or by uploading uh, these works on the internet and so distributing them without agreed reward from the artist, and I do say permission there because there's a whole lot of different complex models that can be used for that reward. And if they are doing that without the permission of the artist, well then they really should be prosecuted under copyright laws. And when it's the position, permission of the artist or that permission given through uh, agents of that artist, doesn't really matter. We also feel that there's a fundamental principle here which we'd like to see debated in the, consult, in the uh, consultation that's going on. And that is that fundamentally, those who commit a crime uh, should be basically those who are held responsibility for it. Just like any other criminal activity, online piracy should be subject to due process of law before a court. And it is those who commit the crime directly that should be prosecuted under these copyright laws. Um, unfortunately, what has tended to happen, because that tends to be a little bit complicated or perceived to be complicated into the in, in the internet world, the rights holders are increasingly lobbying for and also being given frameworks to sue or, as I put it, punish through injunction uh, legitimate internet service providers and intermediary businesses that are actually innocent of any wrongdoing uh, and are providing a service which unfortunately can be misused and so there are alleged illicit activities of customers which we have. Um, this again is further confused because the copyright directive which the law must adhere to and which this whole problem about the SI arose on um, stems from a directive which was really put together, well, the debates would have started on it over 10 years ago, at a time when social networks weren't even invented. Facebook wasn't around, even its Bebos and things like that weren't around. And many other forums were quite small and not well understood. So the whole view was a very simplistic view of what an intermediary is. And so the law tends to refer to intermediaries. Um, and we feel that what has happened is by having this SI, which simply copies what the directive says, that it's basically brought that uh, vagueness through into Irish law by referring back to the directive. Unfortunately, we feel that this uh, statutory instrument wasn't really needed and was in some ways maybe a missed opportunity where directly the um, definition of an intermediary could have been better described in law, but I hope that through the consultation, this is one of the things that will be worked on very rigorously, and we will have a better view of this whole idea of the intermediary that's in a whole chain of intermediaries that connects the source or the user of the internet to the source of the material that they require. 
and that, that this will be used in a way that if there is an intermediary who is culpable, that they can actually be brought to uh, bear under the, the law. The problem with this SI right now is that kind of clarification, which should have been given in the law, has basically been thrown back to the courts. So we're now into the situation of everything being decided on a case-to-case -case basis. Um, and this really gives the uncertainty which I mentioned at the very start. And really what ISPs are worried about are test cases being brought in this country, not only for incidents in this country, but as a precedent within the whole of the European Union. And basically it's the huge cost involved of defending these, which is what ISPs fear. So innovative startups, most medium-sized companies, and indeed most of the ISPs I represent, be they hosting suppliers or access suppliers, simply do not have the funds to kind of defend this sort of thing. So they're likely to keel over to say, okay, well, we'll, we'll just have to live with this. And that is not good for you, the users. And just to final, uh, final point I'd like to make, that really we need certainty in this country. This is kind of particularly needed as in this time of recession, we need certainty in an environment where we're trying to retain the multinationals that we have here. We also want to encourage new innovative digital businesses. And also we want to encourage this much used term now, the location of cloud computing services. So I just ask you to think about what cloud computing services are. They are really services which deal by definition with third party content. And we need to have a very precise environment to help establish those businesses here in Ireland to provide jobs for the people who are coming out of the colonies right now.